So this is a video introducing the concept of highest common factor and lowest common multiple. We're going to start by looking at this list of five names here. Now out of this list I want to write down the names that begin with four letters. So I've looked for the list and I've decided that I want to write down these two names here, Cleo and Evan. Those are the two names that have four letters. I also want to make a list of the names that begin with vowels. So that's the letters A, E, I, O and U. And I've done that already and I came up with these two names here. Aaron begins with A and Evan begins with E. Now seeing the names in a list like this is okay, but there is a better diagram that we can use to show the connection between the names that have four letters and the names that begin with vowels. And that diagram is a Venn diagram. So here's the circle of all the names that begin with vowels, and here's the circle of all the names that have four letters. So let's see where we're going to put each one. So we start at the beginning. We've got Aaron's name there. Now Aaron is a name that begins with a vowel, but doesn't have four letters. So I'm going to put that in this circle here. Okay, Cleo is a name that does not begin with a vowel, but it does have four letters, so I'm going to put it in this part of the circle here. Miriam is a name that doesn't begin with a vowel, and it doesn't have four letters either, so that's actually going to go on the outside of the circles. William is in a similar situation, no vowel, and it's not four letters, so I'm going to put that name on the outside as well. Evan, though, that is a name that does begin with four letters, and it does begin with a vowel. So that's going to go in the crossover or intersection of the Venn diagram here. So now we can see that we've got some names that have vowels at the beginning, some with four letters, some with neither, but one actually has both of those, and the Venn diagram shows that with the intersection. Now we can do that with numbers as well. So we're going to start off with a list. We're going to list the factors of 24. Now you should remember that a factor is a number that can be used to multiply to make the number. So we're going to list 1 and 24 because 1 multiplied by 24 is 24. 2 and 12 for the same reason. We've got 3 and 8 and 4 and 6. So that's the list. Let's do the same thing for 18. So 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6. So those are all the factors of those numbers. The list is fine, but it's a bit hard to read. It looks better if we put those onto a Venn diagram. So here's the factors of 24, and here's the factors of 18. OK, let's go for the numbers then. So 1, it's in both of the lists. So that's going to go into the middle, because it crosses over both of the circles. 24, well, that's just in the 24 factors, so I'll put that one there. 2, uh, 2 is in both lists, so I'm going to put that in the middle as well. 12, that's just in the 24. 3, 3 is in both of the lists. So I'll put that in there. 8, that's just in the 24. 4, that's just in the 24. 6 is in both of the lists. So I've definitely done all the numbers from this list here. Let's just check here. 1, we've already done. 18 is just in the 18 list. 2, we've done already. 9 is just in the 18 list. 3, we've done already. And so is 6. I think we've got all the numbers on the diagram now. So looking at this diagram, we can more easily answer these two questions. What factors are shared? Well, the diagram clearly shows that 24 and 18 share these factors here. So I can write down 1, 2, 3, and 6 very easily. These factors are shared. What is the highest common factor? Well, the word common just means shared. If something is common to two lists, it's in both lists. It's shared by both lists. Highest, of course, means the biggest. 
So looking at our shared factors, either here or on the diagram again, which is the biggest number? Well, clearly, it's 6. So 6 is the highest common factor of 24 and 18. Now, I hope you've done that example in your book with me. I also want you to write down this definition here. So the highest common factor, and it's often called HCF, is the largest number that is a factor of both numbers. So just pause the video and write that definition down. Okay, we're now going to look at multiples. You will remember, I'm sure, that a multiple is just the numbers times table. So the multiples of 6, 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, and the multiples of 9 are the 9 times table. I've stopped here at the 7th number. First question is, what are the common multiples of 6 and 9? Well, the word common, as we've seen, means shared. So what multiples are shared between both numbers. Well, they've both got 18 and they've both got 36 and I think there'll be some more if I carried this on a bit further but what I actually want to know is what is the lowest common multiple of these two numbers. Well these are the common multiples and clearly the lowest number is 18. It's the lowest multiple that's in both lists. And that's what lowest common multiple means. I'd also like you to write down this definition of lowest common multiple. So the lowest common multiple, or LCM, is the smallest number that is a multiple of both numbers. So pause the video and write this definition down. Now you'll see on the edgy link post there is a pdf that has these questions i want you to do these questions now in your book or on paper based on the information in the video so question a is making a venn diagram with these numbers one to ten you've got to put these numbers into the venn diagram odd numbers in this circle multiples of three in this circle crossover intersection here and maybe some numbers on the outside Question B is finding the highest common factor of these pairs of numbers. So you've got an example of how to do that using the Venn diagram. You can find those. And then question C is finding the lowest common multiple of these numbers. Again, you've got an example of that. You'll also see in the PDF these questions. Now these questions are ones we're going to look at in the lesson, but you may want to look through them now just to have a think about how you might do them because they're a little bit more difficult. Or if you want to, you could even try and do them now and bring them in to the lesson. But these are optional. However, I would like you to look at them at least. These are the questions that you have to do. Okay, good luck with those. And I'll see you in the lesson.